Hi there, welcome back to the channel, thanks for joining me. Today we've got another classic Matchbox uh, vintage kit um, and again it's another one of these very early generation ones which we've got to show you. It's the uh, the Nat Mark 1 trainer of Red Arrows fame. Um, many of you of a certain age may remember that um, this actually featured in the John Noakes Go With Noakes programme where John Noakes used to do, he was the, one of the presenters on Blue Peter and frankly one of the most memorable. He used to go off on adventures and do all sorts of crazy stuff and this and this one he actually had been in the Royal Air Force, uh, I think he was a fitter or an engineer and he actually got to ride with the Red Arrows uh, as they went through their air show display routine practice runs and uh, yes he found it quite challenging I think and he was a very fit chap uh, and this was about 1970, 71, something like that. Anyway, back to the kit. <clears throat> So let's go in those and have a closer look in here. Now what we've got here, first of all, it's uh, lovely artwork. Um, only slightly spoiled in this particular case because unfortunately somebody has written on it. Which is also very, very typical. You know, you find uh, these kits are very old at some point. You know, it's very hard to find one that hasn't had some sticker on it or writing on it or something else that slightly corrupts it. However, in every other respect it's pretty much mint. So I'm sort of forgiving it this uh, don't know what all this was about here. No idea. Numbers mean nothing. I suspect that's somebody's catalogue number. And if that's a number in their stash of models, well, makes my model stash look tiny. <laughs> I'm going to tell my wife, look, I haven't got enough. I'm short of about, you know, 800. Anyway, uh, it's a nice it's a nice box. Now, very important to draw your attention to the fact that it's one of these Mark 1 boxes. We'll come to this in a minute, but it's a lift-off lid. Anyway, on the side, we have got Matchbox trying to ply their wares once again. This time it's the Hawker Hurricane, which is PK11, PK11, PK12, which is the Northrop, um, the F5, the Freedom Fighter. Then we've got the uh, PK13, the Mustang, and then PK14, which is the Carrier Born Corsair F4, of which we may hear more later. Turning it round, lovely artwork on the end as normal. Purple range, so we have purple, uh, these purple squares. I don't know about square and a round in purple, strange, but. Uh, and then uh, we have the traditional um, style that they had of putting the uh, sort of artist impression of the finished kit with its decals but no painting. Uh, and although they've made some strange choices here, I think there's a bit of a nod actually, it's not as daft as it looks. Bit of a nod to the yellow jacks, which were yellow nets. I think they've done a mixture of yellow and red for that reason. So fair enough. Uh, and then here, and then some clown here has put their own their own sticker on it, which isn't very straight. I need straightening it just before I forget, because that's going to be a bit of a problem. I think it's going to come off. In other words, in fact, it is coming off. <laughs> it's coming off right now. So let's get that back on there. There we go. That's better. Yes, obviously that was my sticker. But the good news is I don't put very sticky ones on, so all the, the, the good news is it doesn't damage the box. But the bad news is it, it often drops off. Anywho, let's get back to the main model. Let's have a look what we've got inside the box. So, as I said, it's a nice uh, lift-off lid. It's a Mark I. Uh, it's not quite as ancient as that Zero we talked about. Oh, in fact, I'm getting ahead of myself. We always forget this with the lift-off lid, that it has an underneath. It has the paint scheme underneath, so let's have a look at that. So, as you would expect, we've got the Red Arrows. This is 1973. So this is the very first iteration of the box, which was quickly dropped in favour of the end opening boxes with the window in here. But this is not as ancient as that Zero we saw recently, which was 72. That is really old. It was one of the very first one off the production line. Anyway, um, paint call out, obviously, uh, red. <laughs> not not a complicated scheme. Uh, the Red Arrows uh, Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team based at RAF Kemble, which is now the Cotswolds Airport, for those of you that don't know. Uh, and underneath we've got the Central Flying School from Little Rissington, uh, which is the training school, which of course later transferred to, to Valley in Anglesey. Um, and this is the typical trainer, white and red, to denote it's not a Red Arrow. So, where were we? Let's get back to the opening. I've got to say, this is a nice one. It's a show about this writing at the front, because other than that, it's an absolute mincer. Anyway, <clears throat> we won't dwell on that. So inside, as usual, we've got, yes, you guessed it, 
the little baby matchbox stand. I say stand, uh, it was actually a bit missing. Um, I'm hoping it's elsewhere in the kit because it's not going to stand up without a, a central support. And it isn't in here, or is it? Is it? Uh, no. Oh, that's disappointing, isn't it? How odd. Oh dear, falling at the first place. Anyway, not to worry, it's only a stand. And they, you know, they're ten a penny, aren't they, really? But uh, they don't actually should be the bit that goes uh, the rod, the stand itself, the vertical piece. That's not present for some reason. But not to worry, Imp more important is the canopy. That is present. And it's not the most sophisticated canopy I've ever seen, but shape looks about right, looks quite good. No real problem there. And then we have got on the box, because with these you end up flitting back and forth because the box has got more details on them. So yeah, we've got this paint, uh, small parts painting guide, put it on the box instead of putting it on the instructions. So it's like telling you to put silver wheels, black tyres obviously, pito head with a silver front light, and then you've got your uh, undercarriage parts, the pilot, telling you to put a black area in front of the nose and paint your cockpit area grey, which is fair enough. Then we've got the stand guide, unfortunately our stand won't stand up because it's got a bit missing, but anyway. <laughs> and then it's just repeated on the other end, basically exactly the same. So, let's have a look at the destructions. So, here we are. What does it say here? Following that was originally designed and flown in 1955. Oh, I didn't realise it was that old. Uh, it was a lightweight fighter, but it was not accepted as, in service as a strike machine. But the RAF, however, thought that fighter versions were later sold to India, where it was manufactured under licence as a single-seater fighter. The RAF ordered a tandem seat trainer version in 1960, and these are still in service with a number of squadrons. And that was used for display in the world-famous Red Arrows aerobatic team, who performed all over the, the globe. When, Used for this purpose, the machine is flown without underwing fuel tanks. So that's worth remembering. Uh -huh. On the back, just some blurb, and then inside the hop hints again, which we've seen before. That doesn't vary. And sorry, let's just have a quick look at those decals because they just dropped out anyway. So these are rather nice, actually. I've got to say, very nice decals. Look at these red arrows. Look at that. <gasps> What's not to like? Red arrows, got the, the white flashes with the royal crest on it. Beautiful. Traditional roundels and the lovely tail with the Union flag in the middle of it. That's a grand, really nice. And they look quite new to be honest. Okay, the instructions then. So, you start off building up your two guys in their cockpit. Then we get to paint it all grey. Uh, not your men obviously. Then you're going to bring the two pop cockpit sides together plus your jet pipe. Then you're going to bring your uh, covers. Uh, I don't know why they've got. I don't know why they've got covers for no apparent reason over the bodywork in the middle. But anyway, um, you've got a um, canopy to come on, and then the air intakes at the front for the jet intake and the pitot head, and the front. Uh, it has a headlight in it, but I wouldn't put that on at this stage if I were you. Anyway, <laughs> we've got the tailplanes going on, wings going on, and the top aerial going on too. And then we've got the undercarriage coming in, main gear, then the nose, and then obviously you just pop those in, like so. Or if you're doing the trainer version, you put the tanks on as well. And that's it, really. Fairly straightforward. Nothing much to see there, but I'm sure there will be with this bodywork. Let's have a look at these interesting sprays. Well, I said it was yellow. It's kind of an orangey yellow. It's almost like a tangerine yellow. <laughs> um, but it's nice, actually. The shape of the wings is beautiful. I mean, it's always a very attractive plane than that, I thought. Um, I saw the girl with Nokes program, and I think I, I was about seven, six or seven. And I think I fell in love with the Nat. I think it was just awesome. It's just a... a it's like, it's like a Spitfire in, in a jet form. It's very sporty, nice shape. The Hawker Hunter was reminded me of that same sort of uh, same sort of aspects and aesthetics. Again, swept wings, very attractive, a graceful looking aircraft, you know, and a sporty small one in this case as well. So you got your tailplanes here, your wheels, 
You've got your pilot and co-pilot here. And then we got the gear and that rather delicate looking uh, pito head and lamp. And the tailpipe is here. And uh, what else we got? Mm -mm -mm. That's kind of it really. The, so the wings are, they've got the, uh, you insert the underneath ahead of the flaps and the aileron, aileron pieces. It's just an insert. Well, it looks really nice actually. I mean, you know, I know it's a bit of a loud colour, but <laughs> uh, seems sorted if you really wanted to. But even if you didn't, it was, it was quite nice. Now then, the, the rest of the aircraft, which is supposed to be red, um, I have to tell you that it's a very strange colour, this plastic. It's, it's that sort of cherry red, the sort that you see on cars from the 1980s that ends up going kind of pink. And it does, it's got a, like a slightly pink hue to it. Anyway, we've got, we've got the fuselage sides here, and we've got a double-sided tail. So the tail is double-sided, but then, so there's no, no tail here, it just sits uh, beneath the tail, which is on that side. But it, look at the shape of the plane, isn't it lovely? Very graceful than that. You've got these strange um, side covers I mentioned, which seem very odd. Um, basically, the, that's where the gear goes, but it's, the whole area is like opened up for no apparent reason. Seems a bit odd to me. Ejector seats. And here we've got a couple of ejector seats that aren't short-shotted, like the Airfix one that I made a couple of years ago. Thanks, Airfix. That was great, that was. <laughs> had to rebuild the uh, the head box for the ejector seat because it was missing. But these are fine. Then you've got your drop tanks. And they're like a slipper tank style, aren't they? I've got to tell you that this, I don't know if this is coming out on the camera, but the, the colour here is so weird. It's actually making my eyes go a bit funny. It's really psychedelic. It's like being in a psychedelic drug infested nightmare. It's very weird. <laughs> My brain can't decide if it's pink or it's or it's red or it's kind of somewhere almost got a whitey tinge to it in places. It's very odd, very unusual shade of plastic. But hey ho, um, what have we got here? Back of the cockpit, the intakes here for the engine intakes, and then you got your front nose wheel cover and the side ones. It has a very small undercarriage on this aircraft. Um, it's it's like a, a bit like the Harry. It's got a, like a fat single uh, squidgy wheel double double single axle double wheel arrangement, uh, which looks completely inadequate. But then again, it's not a very heavy jet, so I suppose it's not a problem. But when you see them, uh, the real aircraft on the ground, it, it does look very odd because it's got almost no leg to the undercarriage. It's very short. It sits around right its belly almost. Very curious. It's um, there's a trend around about the late fifties when the, obviously their aircraft was it the Supermarine Swift or two others that, that looked a bit similar. But anyway, I'm digressing. So that's it. Um, I have to say it's a lovely little model actually. Um, I did build this uh, later. I think about seventy five, seventy six. I built one, possibly more, um, and it went together very well. It was a very nice kit indeed. So I definitely recommend it to you. Um, I've got to be honest, I think, I think I'd paint it. I think I would paint this one because it's just a bit weird. <laughs> that red is really doing my head. I feel a bit, I feel a bit queasy, <laughs> dizzy. It's, uh, it's almost got a pearlescence to it. It's the most peculiar plastic I think I've ever seen. But anyway, uh, it's the paint. It's obviously some sort of um, pigment they've put into the, the plastic mould to make it red or whatever. But I'm sure the one I had before when I was younger was not like that. I'm sure that, uh, but this is the first one. So I think mine was a later version. I digress. Anyway, I think I give it sort of eight out of ten based on what I've seen. Yeah, uh, it's pretty good. You know, nice little kit. It's only pocket money, twenty-five p again. What's not to like? You know. So anyway, um, thumbs up from me. Hope you'll give me a thumbs up by giving me a like. Please share and uh, let other people know about the video if you thought it was interesting and it brought back some uh, some smiles from the past. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, ding the notification bell because then you'll get an update warning that there's a new video coming up for you to watch next time I do another review, which I hope you'll join me for again. Meantime, thanks a lot. Um, take care of yourselves and uh, before I see you again, 
between then and there. Take care and bye for now.